Okay, so what they want us to do is they want us to evaluate the six trig functions. And all they do is they give us a coordinate point. Now, this was easier, remember, when we had the unit circle, because for the unit circle, uh, we were given what the coordinate points were for certain angles, right? And all we had to do is determine whatever the angle was, we could figure out what the coordinate point was. Well, here what we notice is this is not going to be on the unit circle. The reason being is, remember, the unit circle has a radius of 1. And if I was to draw this point, let's go 7. So, you know, it's going to be... Two, four, six, okay, seven, then two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, eight, twenty-two, twenty-four. Okay, something like that. Alright. Um, obviously, I'm going up twenty-four and over seven. My radius is gonna be larger than one, right? So to solve this problem, if I don't have to solve this problem, if I do not have a point on the unit circle, what I'm gonna have to use is use a right triangle to determine my trig, uh, to help me solve my trig functions. So I'll call this my theta. Here's my point seven comma 24. Therefore, I know that x is gonna be seven and my height will be 24, right? Now, when we were doing our trigonometric functions for the unit circle, it was very easy to say, oh, sine was y, cosine was x. That was because the radius was one. And what we've recently learned is sine is opposite, or your y, over your uh, hypotenuse, or what in this case we call r. So therefore, I need to figure out what is going to be uh, my uh, hypotenuse squared. So what I'll do is I'll say 24 squared plus 7 squared equals c squared. Actually, in this problem, we're going to call it r squared. All right, so 24. Is 576 oh, yeah. plus 49 equals r squared. 625 equals r squared. I'll take the root and I get 25 equals r. Therefore, I know that the radius or my hypotenuse for this is going to be 25. So now to find my sine, I take whatever your y value, which is 24, over my hypotenuse, which is 25. Cosine is x over r. So I just take 7 over 25. Tangent theta. Tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. So therefore, it's going to be 24 over 7. So those are your three main trig functions. Then the next ones, the reciprocal functions, we just need to remember what, what are the reciprocals of. So cosecant of theta is a reciprocal of sine. Therefore, in rather than y over r, it's going to be r over y. So therefore, I just flip it. 25 over 24. Secant of theta is the reciprocal of cosine. So that's going to be um, r over x, which is equal to 25 over 7. And then lastly, I have cotangent of theta, which is the reciprocal of tan. So therefore, it's going to be 7 over 24. Anybody have any questions on what I did with this? Oh, no. Yes. Um, I get as if you did, but how do you know where the um, theta is? Like where the angle is? Do it doesn't really matter. Like matter? you could, I mean, all I, all you really need to know is know that your x is seven, yeah. right, and your y is twenty-four. Okay? okay. So therefore, if I create a right triangle with that, just notice that those two are going to be your legs, right? Because that's your width and your height. So those are going to be the two legs of your triangle. Okay. And then, you know, it, so you could, I mean, you could draw a triangle like this, whatever way you really want to. Um, if, if the base was 7 on the second quadrant, it would be negative 7. It so would be negative 7. Right. So would the sign change to, I mean, the cos change to negative 7 by 25? Yeah. Exactly. If that triangle was over there. Yeah. Yep. And tangent would be negative as well. Yeah. Yeah. 